Welcome back to Latham's AP Macroeconomics. Today we're talking about the marginal propensity to consume and the multiplier, which are key components, the key parts of AP Macroeconomics. Okay, here we go. What we're going to... Today we're going to talk about how to recognize, construct, and explain the consumption and savings schedule, and then calculate and differentiate between the average and marginal propensity to consume and to save, of course, too. Okay, so here we go, looking at, over here at the level of output and income, we have GDP equals disposable income, and we're going to say 200 million, 220 million, 240, 260, 280. So there's our GDP. Now it turns out at 200 million, we actually consume... 215 okay how do we know it's 215 well if we have 200 in income and our savings is a negative 15 so in other words we're borrowing 15 then we're spending more than we made so that totals up to spending of 215 and negative savings of 15 and then we just move our way down at 220 we borrow 10 so we spend a total of 230 at 240 we borrow 5 so that's 245 at 260, we don't have to borrow any. So we're spending, our spending and our income are the same. And then when we get to 280, we're actually making more than we spend. So we spend 275, we save 5 of a total of 280. So there you go. Now we've got consumption and saving based on a certain level of income. First thing we need to know is what's our average propensity to consume? Now, we don't use APC for much, but we still need to know what it means, okay? Well, all you do is take your consumption and your income, so our consumption of 215 divided by our income of 200, and I'm going to say that's about 1.08, okay? That's rounded, but 1.08. Well, if I'm spending 108% of what I make, my savings has to be a negative and a negative 0.08. The brackets indicate negative. I continue doing this, okay? I'm, I'm consuming 230. I only, my income's only 220. That comes out to about 1.04, which means my savings or my borrowing is negative 4%. At 240, it's just a little bit over 1.02. So that's negative 0 0.02. Then at 260, my spending and my income are the same. So this is 1%. And that makes that zero. So now I'm not saving anything, but I'm also not having to borrow or use my wealth or whatever. And then finally at 280, I don't spend all my income. We'll call this 0.98, which means I'm saving 0.02. So 98% of my money I'm spending, I'm consuming. 2% I'm saving. Notice they all add up to one because all of the money you get, you have to spend or you save. Now, that's nice. we got average. What we really want is marginal. Okay, marginal propensity to consume. Well, at the beginning, there is no marginal. you got to start somewhere. So this first one, I can't put anything in. But continuing on, well, I did have 200 in income. Now I have 220. Well, what's the difference between 200 and 220? I have 20 more in income. How much more did I spend? Well, I did spend 215. I now spend 230. That's only 15. So... I spend 15 of an additional 20 in income. Well, marginal propensity to consume. What was what did I spend marginally? Well, I spent marginally 15 out of 20 or 0.75. Well, I didn't spend 5. 5 out of 20 is 0.25. And once again, notice 0.75 and 0.25 add up to 1. Same thing with average with marginal is... You, your marginal income, you either spend it or you save it. Let's continue on. Okay, the next one, 220 to 240. There's another 20. 245 down at 230. Well, that's another 15. That looks familiar, so I'm going to have my same numbers here. 0 0.75, 0 0.25. So I'm just moving along. If I look, this one's also 20, this one's 20, this one's also 15, this one's also 15. In this case, my marginal propensity to consume continues on at 0.75 the whole time, and so that my savings continues on at 0.25, and so it's consistent here. It doesn't have to be, but in most AP problems, it will be just to keep the math simpler. But it could change, and we could identify it. Okay, now let's move on to our next slide. Here I've repeated, here's our income, here's our consumption, 
Here's our average propensity to consume and save, marginal propensity to consume and save. So all I did was transfer over from the other side, uh, the other slide, this information so we could see it again. So now I've got some questions. What is the average propensity to consume at a disposable income level of 200? Okay, take a look, see if you can figure it out. Well, disposable income of 200, average propensity to consume. 1.08. How about it? 260. Well, it's exactly 1. Okay? See it up there? 260, 1. Okay? What happens to the average propensity to consume as disposable income rises? Okay, here we look. Disposable income is rising. What's happening to the APC? Well, it's actually declining, isn't it? Why? Well, look over here to marginal propensity to consume. Which is bigger, 1.08 or 0.75, 1.04 or 0.75, and so on? Well, the reason it declines is because the marginal propensity to consume is lower than the average, and that's virtually always true, and so you'll always be able to explain that in that way. No one's going to have a marginal propensity to consume that's higher than the average because you've got to cover your rent and your you know, your insurance and all these things. You've got to spend all your basics and then as you get more money, then you get to make decisions as to whether you want to spend more money. Okay, What is the marginal propensity to consume as disposable income goes from 240 to 260? So take a look. Find 240 and 260. What's happening to the marginal propensity to consume? Well, in this case, since it's 0.75 on every one, it's also going to be 0.75 here. In other words, if I get an extra 20 in income, I'm going to spend 75% of that. The set, there'll be another 25% that I don't spend. Well, I'll put that into savings because I either have to spend it or save it. Okay, what's the marginal propensity to save as disposable income goes from 240 to 260? Well, I'm spending 75%. I have to be saving the other 25%. Okay, so here's our calculation for marginal propensity to consume. And then the result, once we get MPC, well, then it kind of gives us marginal propensity to save. Okay, now, what ca uh, you know, we need some determinants for this thing. Okay, so we're going to identify the determinants of consumption and saving. Well, the first thing we have is income. Income creates the curve in the first place. Without income, you can't determine anything, right? You need money to spend. So there's the curve. That's the primary determinant of consumption and saving. But once you get to a certain level, what would cause the curve to shift one way or the other? What would cause you to either spend more or spend less? Okay, well, let's think about that. First thing is wealth, which is extra money you have, or debt, which is, means you actually have less money, right? Well, if you have more wealth... You can spend more, right? Because not only can I spend my income, but if I choose to, I can also spend part of my wealth. Retired people do this a lot, right? Conversely, if I have a ton of debt, well, then I'm having to pay off the debt. Well, I get income. Instead of con consuming something, instead of buying something, I have to pay off my debt. So I'm actually going to spend, I'm going to consume less because I'm going to have to take the money that I, my income, and I'm going to have to pay off my debt. So a big one is wealth or debt. Second one is expectations. Well, if I'm young and I'm doing really well in my career, I expect my salary to keep going up and up and up. Well, then I can spend more because I know, you know, or at least I believe my income is going to keep growing. So that caused me to grow more, to spend more. If I'm old, you know, kind of like me now, and I expect to retire soon, well, then I want to I want to consume less because I know I'm going to need that money for retirement. My income is going to go down, all those things. So that would cause me to consume less of my income. Real interest rates. Real interest rates also affect consumption and savings. High interest rates will typically cause you to consume less. Low interest rates might cause you to consume more. Um, but int real interest rates are there too. And then lastly... Shifts in the curve. Uh, uh, what causes both consumption and savings? And, and all of these up here, okay, they cause either consumption to increase 
and savings to decline or consumption to decline and savings to increase. This one, if you tax more, so if taxes go up, well then I have my income literally goes down and so I can consume less and I can save less. So up top here, consumption and saving go in first directions. With taxes, they're going to go in the same direction. Higher taxes results in less consumption and savings. And lower taxes, if the government lowers our taxes, then it allows us to consume more and save more. Okay, so that's our start. We'll continue on. Next thing we're going to cover is the multiplier. We'll see you soon. Thanks.